Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar sponsored by the Association of Schools and Programs of Public Health, or ASPPH. My name is Monica Staller, and I'm the Director of Graduate Training Programs here at ASPPH. The purpose of today's webinar is to share information about fellowship and internship opportunities sponsored by ASPPH for students and alumni of our member CEPH accredited Schools and Programs of Public Health. During today's webinar, we'll share information about fellowship opportunities at three federal agencies, the CDC, EPA, and NHTSA, and at an independent private foundation, the De Beaumont Foundation. We'll also share information about the internship program offered here at ASBPH headquarters in Washington, D.C. during the summer. Then we'll plan to provide an overview of the application process. We've allocated time at the end of the program for questions and answers. In addition, we're joined today by two of our fellows who, have, who we've asked to share their personal experiences in their fellowship position. Carrie Wisner, a fellow who recently completed her fellowship at the CDC, and Deandra Morris, a fellow currently assigned to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA. Also presenting today will be my colleague, Erin Williams, Program Manager of ASPPH Fellowship Programs. Before we start, a few housekeeping details. At any time during the webinar, you can type your question into the questions box, which you can find on the toolbar on the right side of your computer screen, as shown here. We'll address all questions during the question and answer session after the presentation. If you have not already done so, please be sure to put your phones on mute to eliminate any background, excuse me, any background noises. Now to begin. The Association of Schools and Programs of Public Health, known as ASPPH, is the voice of accredited public health education. We represent schools and programs accredited by the Council on Education for Public Health, or as commonly referred, CEPH. ASPPH is pleased to partner with several federal agencies, including the EPA, the U.S. Department of Transportation, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, and the CDC, as well as the philanthropic organization, the De Beaumont Foundation, to offer public health training opportunities for students and recent graduates of our member schools and programs. You may ask yourself, what distinguishes the ASPPH training programs from all other fellowships out there? First and foremost, with over 30 years of training program experience, ASPPH provides highly respected and recognized mentor training programs specifically aimed at fostering the growth of early career public health professionals. We have time-tested relationships with federal agencies that are involved in public health such as CDC, EPA, and NHTSA. The performance of our fellows speaks for itself as a significant number of our program participants go on to become full-time employees or contractors at their host agencies. In addition, as an ASPPH fellow or intern, you become part of a network of over 2,200 ASPPH fellowship and internship alumni who are public health leaders in private, nonprofit, academic and government organizations. Wherever you are in your career, you can always contact ASPPH and ASPPH fellow and intern alumni for networking, advice, and support. ASPPH offers two types of graduate training programs, internships and fellowships. Internships are short-term training assignments, usually 10 to 12 weeks long, and are open to students currently enrolled in an ASPPH, CEPH accredited school or program of public health. Fellowships are long-term training assignments, typically one to two years, and in some circumstances, three years. Fellowships are open to recent graduates, defined as students who will have received a master's or doctorate degree by the start of the fellowship, or students who have graduated within the previous five years of the start, of, of the start date of fellowship. During this presentation, we'll focus on fellowship opportunities that are scheduled to begin in summer and early fall of 2019 and internship positions for summer 2019. For the internship program, applicants must be enrolled 
in an ASPPH member CEPH accredited graduate school or program of public health and currently seeking a master's or doctoral degree. To be eligible for ASPPH fellowship programs, applicants must have received a master's or doctoral degree from an ASPPH member CEPH accredited school or program of public health. The graduate degree must have been earned prior to the beginning of the fellowship and no earlier than the previous five years. We are often asked if you must have an MPH degree specifically or if it's okay to have an MSPH or MHS. The answer depends on where you got your degree. If you attended an ASPPH member school of public health, then any graduate degree received through the School of Public Health is acceptable. If you attended an ASPPH member program of public health, only those degrees which are accredited by CEPH are eligible, and this varies by program. The same principle applies to doctoral degrees. They must be from the ASPPH member CEPH accredited school or program of public health. To reiterate, ASPPH fellowships and internships are for students and graduates of ASPPH member institutions only. If your public health graduate degree did not come from an ASPPH member institution, then you are not eligible for these programs. All applicants for ASPPH fellowships and internships must also be U.S. citizens or hold visas permitting permanent residence in the US, i.e. have a green card to be eligible. Work visas do not qualify. For international students who are on today's webcast, we suggest you check with your school's career services office as well as the ASPPH website, www.publichealthjobs.org to find opportunities for which you might be eligible. You may also research opportunities available directly through the federal agency in which you are interested. Internship assignments are 10 to 12 weeks, typically scheduled June through August. Interns will receive a training stipend. Each intern is required to establish goals and objectives for the assignment. These goals and objectives are established in collaboration with the ASPPH mentor and possibly with a faculty advisor. At the end of the internship assignment, each intern is required to submit a final summary report of their internship project work. Oftentimes, the ASPPH internship will serve to meet a practicum or internship requirement and also can serve as the basis for a thesis or other academic paper. All internship opportunities will be based here at ASPPH headquarters in Washington, D.C. Fellowship assignments are 12-month placements. Some ASPPH programs offer extensions for two and possibly three years based on the availability of funding at the host agency and the satisfactory progress of the fellow. Fellows receive a training stipend, an allowance for health insurance premiums, and in some cases, a travel and training allowance. The stipends and allowances will vary by program and fellowship location. All fellowships are required to establish goals and objectives that they will accomplish during their placement. These goals and objectives are established in collaboration with the host agency mentors and are reported to ASPPH at the beginning of the fellowship. Fellows will then report to ASPPH and their mentors on their progress in accomplishing their plan throughout the assignment period. At the end of the assignment, each fellow is required to submit a final report and assessment. Specific fellowship opportunities will be discussed in just a moment. But for now, the best person to describe a program is somebody who has experienced it. As such, we're pleased that Carrie Wisner can be with us today. Carrie recently completed her three-year ASPPH CDC Public Health Fellowship based at the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Carrie? Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. 
Okay, so yeah, hi, my name is Carrie Weisner, and I got my MPH from Tulane in epidemiology, and then I also have a bachelor's from the University of Hawaii in microbiology. Um, like was mentioned, uh, I worked for the CDC as during my ASCPH fellowship. I worked for the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, NIOSH, and my branch specifically focused on research about safety equipment like respirators, gowns, and gloves. I worked on several high profile projects, notably in response to the Ebola epidemic, um, national emergency pandemic planning, and shortages of safety equipment for healthcare workers. The fellowship is really about how much effort you put into it, and there's a lot of room to focus on your specific interests and working on a project with your mentor that combines your um, master's degree program skills and then your specific interests within the division. So I published peer reviewed manuscripts describing NIOSH data sets where I was actually the lead analyst and uh, the, you know, the first author um, with a number of people in my department looking at um, several data sets at the federal level from NIOSH and CDC as well as um, external ones from OSHA. This involved developing a research question with my mentor, coding my own statistics, writing up the results, navigating all of the CDC clearance processes, and working with the journals and the reviewers um, to get that manuscript published. I also got to do some field work where we were sampling aged safety equipment from health department storage, um, storage facilities to test in the lab to determine if age changed the product. So that involves working with health departments, um, creating an epidemiological study with uh, strategic sampling, um, you know, and then working with NIOSH in the lab to um, develop processes. So I got to write a lot, I got to do protocols, um, and I was involved in several high profile meetings. Um, so I got to see how you know, my bosses interacted with other divisions and departments and how collaborative projects kind of came together. So this overall increased my understanding of research project management in a significant way. So I worked with statisticians, chemists, medical doctors, industrial hygienists, um, and senior scientists across CDC and NIOSH and other federal agencies. Um, and I was really able to use my public health and epidemiology background to influence projects. Um, I wanted to make sure that there were actionable recommendations for policymakers, because that was my interest and focus. Um, so I got to influence major projects that uh, NIOSH was working on to make sure that um, those needs were met so that um, NIOSH could have a significant impact in the policy arena. So overall, this fellowship significantly built up my resume with publications and presentations. It also extended my network of public health contacts, um, you know, the ASPPH community, as well as the healthcare departments that I worked with, um, the different hospitals that I worked with, the different contracting agencies, you know, as well as a lot of people um, within CDC and at other departments. So I had a very successful uh, fellowship, and it really is about, you know, what your interests are and working with your mentor to develop something that's impactful for you. That was my fellowship. Right. Thank you so much, Carrie, for sharing your experience as an ASPPH fellow. Now we're going to discuss each of the ASPPH programs that have training opportunities coming up in 2019. We're very excited to announce four opportunities this year. The ASPPH CDC Public Health Fellowship Program, the ASPPH NHTSA Public Health Fellowship Program, and the ASPPH Public Health Philanthropy Fellowship Program. Um, for those interested in pursuing a fellowship at either a federal agency or a philanthropic organization, um, as well as the ASPPH EPA Environmental Health Fellowship Program. All fellowship applications are currently open and we're accepting applications for all programs. The deadline for the ASPPH CDC Public Health Fellowship Program is January 31st. For the Public Health Philanthropy Fellowship Program, the deadline is February 8th. For the NHTSA Public Health and, uh, Fellowship Program, deadline is February 15th. And for the Environmental Health Fellowship Program at EPA, the deadline is February 20th. Please note that these deadlines apply to all fellowship materials. The letters of recommendation and faculty advisor verifications are also due on these dates. And we'll discuss these more in a few minutes. First, to talk about the ASPPH CDC Public Health Fellowship Program. 
The goal of this program is to identify new approaches and opportunities for field experience in which recent graduates and early career professionals with graduate degrees can practice applying skills and knowledge that they've learned in the classroom and field. The program provides fellows the opportunity to train under nationally recognized experts who work to protect human health at the national and international level. Fellowship locations this year are all based in Atlanta, Georgia. Fellowships are expected to start in early July 2019. The ASPPH Public Health Philanthropy Fellowship Program provides an opportunity for early career public health professionals to develop skills and practice-based research, policy, and grant making within an organization dedicated to philanthropy with a focus on public health. The fellowship is based at the De Beaumont Foundation's headquarters in Bethesda, Maryland, a suburb of Washington, D.C., and is expected to start in July 2019. The ASPPH NHTSA Public Health Fellowship Program provides opportunities for early career professionals to apply their public health knowledge on projects that address the preventable public health problems associated with motor vehicle injuries, death and disabilities, and ultimately improve traffic safety. Fellows have the opportunity to work with experienced professionals at NHTSA to learn all the components of the comprehensive approach to traffic safety develop a thorough understanding of the shared missions between public health, traffic safety, and injury prevention, and experience working within a federal agency on projects affecting the public health of the entire nation. Fellowship locations are all located here in Washington, D.C., and are expected to start in September of 2019. The goal of the ASPPH EPA Environmental Health Fellowship Program is to provide professional training and opportunities for early career public health professionals to be involved with EPA on current and emerging environmental public health needs. The program provides fellows the opportunity to train under nationally recognized experts who work to protect human health and the environment at a national and international level. The program focuses on climate change, sustainable communities, drinking water and public health, children's environmental health, air quality, and environmental justice. Fellowship locations will be primarily located in Washington, D.C. and research, excuse me, research Triangle Park, North Carolina, and there are occasional opportunities open at EPA regional offices throughout the country. Fellowships are expected to start in September 2019. Exact locations will not be determined until the final placement stage. Lastly, the application for the ASPPH Summer Internship Program is also open, and the deadline is Friday, January 25th. ASPPH Summer Internships are designed to provide a learning experience in public health for current graduate students. ASPPH interns have contributed in the past education, communication, and data analysis projects here at ASPPH. Information regarding the ASPPH fellowships and internships is available through your career services and or your student liaison office at your school or program. In addition, you may also access information online, including all application deadlines and detailed application instructions. Just go to the main page of the ASPPH website and click on the link at the top that says Study, and then click Fellowships and Internships. You can also go directly to the Fellowships and Internships Applications Portal, where you can create an account and submit an application. A great way to stay up to date about training opportunities is to subscribe to the ASPPH Friday Letter. We announce all our fellowship and internship openings through the Friday letter and also advertise partner opportunities. Now I'll hand this over to my colleague, Erin Williams, Fellowship Program Manager, to talk about the application process. Erin? Thank you, Monica. Now that you're all ready and excited to apply for the fellowship program, let's uh, teach you how to do it. So the first step to apply for a fellowship or internship you'll need to create an account in the ASPPH application portal seen on your screen. If you don't already have an account, you can easily create one here. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on how to apply for fellowships in these next couple of slides, but the process is going to be the same for the internships and the um, other uh, opportunities. And the requirements for each is very similar. So for those of you who already have an account in our system, you can sign in from this page. So there are five main components in the application package. First is your CV or resume. Secondly, your two recommendation letters. And these are going to be specific to the program being applied to. So for example, if you're applying to the fellowship program, uh, three different positions in the fellowship program, you would just need two recommendation letters for that program. However, if you're also applying for the EPA uh, fellowship program or an internship program, you're going to want to have specific uh, recommendation letters for each program you're applying to. Not necessarily each position if you're applying for multiple positions, but each program. <coughs> Excuse me. Your graduate transcript from, from your school or program of public health. Um, for the application, you just need to submit an official um, or unofficial transcript, and if you're going to be selected for that position, that's when you would have to provide the official transcript before you can begin. You're also going to need brief essays, no more than 1,500 words, which are specific to the position for which you are applying. So if you apply to only one position, you only need to submit one essay. But if you are going to take advantage and apply to more than one position in a program, you're going to need to submit three separate essays. And then lastly, the faculty advisor information. And this is only for applicants who have not yet graduated or whose transcript doesn't show their graduation date yet. And your advisor will need to verify your graduation date. And then finally, if you're not a US citizen, but a permanent resident, you will be asked to indicate that in the application. However, you're not gonna be required to provide proof of residency status unless you're offered that position. And then both the green card holders and US citizens would be required to provide proof of citizenship or residency status if you are offered a position. And before we show you how to use the ASPPH application portal, I am pleased to welcome Deandra Morris. Deandra is a first year fellow with the ASPPH NHTSA Public Health Fellowship. But in addition to that, she recently completed two years as an ASPPH EPA Environmental Health, Health Fellow as well. So she is uniquely qualified to share tips and information on how to submit a strong application, having submitted two successful applications herself. Deandra? Hi, Erin. Thank you. And hi, everybody else. Um, it's, I'm glad to have the opportunity to talk to you guys today and to share some application tips. Um, to begin, I'm going to review some of the application components that Erin just previously discussed and even echo some of the things that she emphasized as well. Um, starting off with the faculty advisor information document, um, one thing that I would suggest is that you try to get that as soon as possible. Um, I recall from my own experience when applying to the EPA fellowship that my school didn't necessarily have that document on hand, so we had to request it ahead of time. And also make sure that you emphasize that your advisor notes your graduation date on there as well. Um, as Aaron stated, if you haven't graduated as of yet. In regard to your two letters of recommendation, I also want to stress the fact that you want to make sure that you request those as soon as you can. Um, I know that we're coming off of our holiday vacation and it's also the new year. Um, so things might be a little busy and hectic with your recommenders, especially if they're professors. So try and give them enough time to write the letters. And also inform them about why you're interested in the specific fellowship pro program or program that you're applying to. And also give them a background about what the fellowship is itself. Um, one way to do this is to maybe even just share the fellowship application document with them so they can review it and just highlight the programs that you're interested in applying to. Um, this is especially important for those applying for the CDC fellowship as you guys' deadline is coming up pretty soon. Um, also, explain the application process to your recommenders. Um, specifically state that they'll be receiving their notice to submit their letter of recommendation by email. Um, and make sure that you also try and have variety in your letters of recommendations if you can. If you're working right now, it would be great to have one that's more from a professional angle. Um, and you can also, and you probably should have one that's more from an academic-based um, perspective just so that you have a more holistic representation of yourself and the skills that you can bring, um, and also what you're looking to gain from the fellowship program. Um, in regards to your graduate's transcripts, I know we mentioned that 
you're able to submit both an official or unofficial transcript for the time being. Um, I want to also highlight this because receiving transcripts may vary from which institution you went to, especially your undergraduate institution. Check to see if you can get those transcripts electronically because it might speed up the process um, in an official or unofficial format. Um, and then make sure you still apply to get the official version of those transcripts as well. But this might assist in the turnaround time that you have to request your transcripts and submit them with your application on a timely manner. Um, Deandra, also, mm -hmm. Sorry, this is Monica, just very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. We started the um, undergraduate um, transcripts are not necessary. So we, re we require only transcripts from your graduate school of public health. I'm sorry, guys. And well, from your graduate school, um, I know that my school was able to give me my um, transcript through a PDF. Um, so just to check to make sure that that's an option for your graduate school. Sorry about that um, error. Um, and also with your CVs um, or resumes and your essays, um, there are some things I wanted to note about that as well. Make sure you edit and revise your CVs if you can. That's career services um, at your school will probably be great for helping and assisting with that. Um, in addition, also make sure that you review your resume so they highlight the specific skills relevant to the position, excuse me, to the position that you're applying to. And also make sure that your essays show why you're truly interested in the position and also what you think you will be able to gain and learn from participating in a specific fellowship program. And then I have just a few additional points that are outside of the application guidelines directly. One thing that I wanted to state was that there is an opportunity, as Erin mentioned, to apply for multiple fellowship positions within each agency. When you look through the application in more detail, say EPA might offer two positions or NISA might offer two positions, you're open to apply to both. And also you can apply to multiple ASPP fellow ASPPH fellowship programs at different agencies as well. Um, just make sure that your essays are different and tailored to the given program that you're applying to. Um, and also, there's no specific skills or topic related backgrounds required to apply to a given fellowship. Um, this is specific to me in some ways. My MPH is in behavioral sciences and health education, um, and I went to Emory University. Um, however, I did do the fellowship program at EPA in environmental health, and that was mainly based on my interest in behavioral sciences, social sciences, and also social justice which all relate to the environmental justice related mission that EPA um, was focused on given on the position that I was applying to. And in my current position, similarly, there's a social justice and health aspect, um, specifically looking at transportation access and transportation safety. Um, and it also allows me to gain more skills and communication um, with the office that I'm working for. So in essence, what I really wanna focus on is the fact that Although the position descriptions might not seem like they fit for you, make sure that you give yourself the opportunity to review it in more detail and see if there are any components that are actually related to your interest and that you can benefit from and learn from throughout the process. Um, and then I believe Erin is going to go more into detail about the application process. Um, I will say that it can vary from fellowship to fellowship. In my first fellowship, I did do an in-person interview. However, I did not do that with NHTSA. Um, and then you go through the process of getting information back from the agencies and doing a potential interview with them. Um, and then you'll hear back about your selection process um, and to see if you were selected. Um, some of the other fellows I've talked to, the general timeline for that is around um, May or April is what we've kind of got the consensus of. Um, but if you have any additional questions, please feel free to ask me at the end of the webinar. And it was great talking to you guys and good luck on your applications. Thank you so much, Deandra. So beneficial hearing from somebody who has navigated this process successfully, not once, but twice. So thank you so much. Okay, so now I'm going to provide a walkthrough of how to use the fellowship and internships.aspph.org application portal. So on the screen, you're going to see um, the login screen. So the first step into applying is to visit the ASPPH website, which again is fellowships-internships.aspph.org, and you may log in or sign up for a new account directly on this page. You can also access the online application portal from the main ASPPH website, aspph.org, by clicking on the Study tab and then follow the Fellowships and Internships link. 
And once you have logged in, you're going to come to the home page for the ACCH application portal. This page shows you any open applications at the top, including the application deadline and a link to view the full program announcement. And the program announcement is going to be your most important resource you have when applying to a fellowship or internship. It's going to include detailed information about the fellowship program, the position descriptions, eligibility, review procedures and criteria, timelines, and how to apply. So we are going to strongly recommend that you review the entire program announcement for each of the different programs before you start your application. And this homepage also includes some quick information and links to additional resources, including a My Status section shown here. And once you have submitted an application, you can track the progress of your application in this section. You can also find a user's manual with step-by-step -step instructions on how to submit an application at the bottom of the page in the resources section. And then on this page, you're gonna see that there's five steps to complete and submit your application. Step one is going to be the My Profile page, where you're going to enter your personal and contact information. And please be sure to use a permanent email address for your application, because this is the email that we are going to use to contact you about your application throughout the entire process. So if, for example, you have a school email, that may not be the best option if you'll not have access to it after you graduate. Next. Step two is My Education, and this is where you're going to enter your degree information and upload your resume and your transcript. Now note that in the application system, you may upload an unofficial graduate transcript for the purpose of the application. And then again, if you are offered and accept a fellowship position, that is when you'll be required to provide the official graduate transcript. And in addition, when you enter your graduation date, if it has not yet occurred, you're going to be directed to enter your faculty advisor information here. And when you submit your application, the system will generate an email to your faculty advisor asking them to verify your anticipated uh, graduation date. And please be sure to talk to your faculty advisor before the application deadline so that they are aware and prepared to respond. Because note that um, the email to your faculty advisor will not be sent out until you submit your application for the first time. So please, it is not a good idea to submit your application for the first time on the due date. If you plan to submit your final application on the due date, please remember to enter your faculty, faculty advisor's information before then, submit the application in order to generate that email to your recommendations to be sent, and then click on the pencil icon to continue working on your application. Remember to resubmit the full application by the deadline date. And step three is my application. And this is where you're going to select the positions you're applying to and upload your essays, as well as enter the information for your letters of reference. So you're gonna see a list of open positions for the program you're applying to on this page. And if you're not sure which positions you want to apply to, there's going to be a link to that program announcement I was talking about at the top of the page, which is going to include details about each position. And you may apply to the position you're interested in by uploading that essay for that position. You can apply to a maximum of three positions under each of the fellowship programs, and the system will not allow you to upload more than three essays. And the reference section at the bottom of the page is where you're gonna enter the contact information for those two people who have agreed to write your letters of recommendation. And there's no restriction on who you may request to be your reference, but remember, there should be people who can speak to your experience and qualifications for the program you're applying to. So when you submit your application, the system will automatically generate that email to each of your references, asking them to submit their letter. And as with the faculty advisor, you should be sure to speak to your references well before the application deadline so that they are prepared to respond promptly. And also, as with the faculty advisor section, the email to the, your recommendators will not be sent out until you submit your application for the first time. So once again, don't wait until the day of the due date to submit your final application. If you plan to submit your final application on that due date, you should enter the recommendators uh, information before then, submit that application in order to prompt those emails to be sent, and then click the pencil icon to continue working on the application. And please remember to resubmit the final application by that deadline. 
And note that the system will not send reminders to the letter writers or faculty advisors, so it's going to be your responsibility to make sure that all of those required elements are submitted by that deadline. And then in step four, you're going to review your entire application. And if you need to make any changes, just click on that pencil icon next to the section you want to revise, and it's going to take you back to that section to make any changes. And then lastly, the final step to submit your application is step five. And this is where you're going to check the box to electronically sign your application and hit the submit button. And when your application is successfully submitted, you will also receive a confirmation email. So the system also automatically generates the emails to your references and faculty advisor if applicable. Now, please note that just saving the application with all that information will not generate those emails. You must hit the submit button for that to happen. And as mentioned before, your faculty advisor and references must also complete their sections by the application deadline. Therefore, again, don't wait until the last day to submit your application because your references and faculty advisor will not have time to submit their materials before that deadline is due. And then once you have submitted your application, you may resend it at any time to make those changes from the home page by clicking on that pencil icon. And as long as you resubmit by the application deadline, your application will be reviewed. This is a good option if you want your references and faculty advisors to get the email, but you're still going to be working on perfecting your essays or your resume. But just remember that if you resend, you must resubmit or your application will not be reviewed. And ASBPH will not be able to accept any incomplete app application, and this is going to include that missing information and submissions from your references or your faculty advisor. So the application deadline is also that deadline for them to submit their documents as well. And once the deadline is passed, ASPPH will review all the applications for completeness and eligibility, and we will update your status in the system when your application has been verified and moved along to the first review stage. And you may view your application status at any time once you are logged into the system. And the system will also automatically send you an email update with any change in your status. And once that deadline has passed, ASPPH will review all the applications uh, for completeness and eligibility, and we're going to update your status in the system when it has been verified and moved along to the review stage. And you may review your application status at any time, and it will also automatically send you an email update. So I will now turn the presentation back over to Monica to go over the review process. Monica? Great. Thanks, Erin. Um, ASVPH does ensure that all eligible completed applications submitted by the deadline will be reviewed in an open, fair, and transparent process. Each application is reviewed by two faculty or staff members from ASVPH member institutions, but not from the same institution as the applicant in order to keep it objective. Applications are scored according to criteria noted in the program announcement and the top applicants progress to the next phase, the technical review. During this time, applicants may be contacted for interviews directly by the agency. Moving on to the technical review phase, phase does not guarantee that an applicant will re receive an interview, only that the application has been sent to the placement agency for review. It's possible that all applicants, or that not all applicants, in the technical review phase will receive interviews. For the ASPPH EPA Fellowship Program, the next step in a, is a formal panel interview. This year we're going to be conducting the interviews by Skype or other web-based system. The interviews will be held in early April. All applicants who advance to this stage are required to participate in the panel interview in order to be considered for final placements with the EPA Fellowship. The top applicants from the interviews will then progress to the technical review at EPA. Individuals selected for a position will be contacted directly by ASPPH by a phone and email for all programs. Those applicants who are not selected will be notified by ASPPH by email. The timeline for each program varies. Therefore, please refer to your website and the specific program announcement to review important dates for the program in which you are interested. 
So this ends the formal presentation, and we're now going to open up the lines for questions. Please type your question into the chat or question box in the right corner of the screen. To open the box, press the two arrows. I'll then direct your question to one of today's speakers. We have um, about 20 minutes or so um, left in today's program to answer questions, and we'll try to answer as many questions as possible. But if we run out of time, you may email your questions to ASPPH. We'll compile those questions and responses and post on our resources page of the ASPPH application portal. Okay. So I'm so I have um, a question. Um, could you let me know if students who are not US citizens or permanent residents but are authorized to work in the United States, such as EAD, apply for the ASPPH summer internships. Um, this is actually a question that we um, are currently discuss discussing um, with our legal counsel. For all of our federally funded um, fellowship positions, um, non-US citizens or, or, or people who do not have a green card may not apply. They are not eligible. However, for the summer internship program, there might be a loophole. And the person who, um, who's asking this question, I did get your email, and I have um, not responded because I'm waiting to speak um, to get some information back from our attorneys. So just so you know, I do have your email, and I'll, I'll respond to you specifically once I have more information. But as of right now, unfortunately, no. You must be a U.S. citizen or permanent resident of the U.S. in order to be eligible for a program. Okay. And then another one. Um, I'll be graduating in May 2019. I wanted to clarify the point about five years. Will I be eligible to apply for a fellowship for summer 2020? Um, yes. So for fellowships, you will be eligible for up to five years following your graduation. So um, you'll be eligible um, this year and for the next five years. Um, you can, so if for whatever reason you don't want to ap apply to one of our programs right away, um, you can always come back next year or the year after or so on in order to, uh, to apply for one of our programs. That's perfectly fine. Um, there, is there any leeway with the start date for the fellowship by like a week or so? Um, that depends. Um, all fellows, um, everyone who's selected as a fellow is absolutely, without exception, required to attend the orientation program. And we have had, in some cases, fellows who have had extenuating circumstances will come to orientation um, supported by um, it's completely um, up to the fellow to financially support that trip if they have to come in and out of the fellowship location. If there's travel involved, they'll be responsible for that. But we will allow them, we have allowed in some cases, for them to come attend orientation and then start a week or two later. Um, so that has been done on the past. It is handled on a case-by-case -case basis depending on your individual circumstances. So um, I, I recommend that you go ahead and apply for the fellowship. And if you're select, uh, and then before um, you accept the position or not, um, we can discuss the possibilities then. It will also depend on the program. Some programs um, are more flexible than others, um, depending on who the, the host agency is. Um, do you know how many people apply for the philanthropic fellowship each year? Um, typically, um, each, well, first of all, each year we only have one position available. We only have one fellow per year. And typically, um, at least for the last couple of years, we receive approximately 40 to 50 applications for that position. Okay. All right. Okay, approximately how many candidates is each fellowship uh, considering? Um, 
it varies. Um, some of our agent of our host agencies know at the beginning how many fellows they're going to fund. Others do not. So, for example, with a CDC fellowship, you'll see three. I'm sorry, four very specific fellowship descriptions. CDC is bringing on only four fellows this year. With the EPA program, um, and uh, with the EPA program, on the other hand, um, we don't know. It always depends on how many offices decide they want to um, interview candidates and how many matches we're able to find um, ultimately during the, the matching phase of the process. Um, in past years, we typically will place 10 to 12 fellows with that program a year. Okay, um, this is it one candidate per position? Yes, unless otherwise noted. Um, and not this year, but it, um, well, at least with CDC, it'll it'll specify um, this description is for two positions, for example. With the EPA fellowship um, and, and the NHTSA fellowship, um, there is a possibility, more so for EPA than NHTSA, um, with EPA it's likely that there could be more than one position related to a training area. And you'll understand what I mean once you go in and read the program descriptions um, and see the, the training areas that are offered under the EPA fellowship. But typically, um, there, for any one, there could be more, for any one training area, there could be multiple positions available. Um, but it's also possible that no fellowship positions will be offered under a given training area. So it, it does vary quite a bit um, for that program. Okay. So do the letters of recommendations have to be um, in by the deadline as well? Yes, um, as re repeated several times during this presentation, the deadline is the same for everything. Okay, could you let, um, yep, this is the same question, apologies. Okay, I think, I think we've run our course um, with the questions. So just to let you know, um, ASPPH um, has a general email address for questions. It's trainingprograms at ASPPH.org. You are welcome to submit any questions you might think of after today's presentation um, and send it uh, to us in, um, in that email address, and we'll do our best to respond to you quickly. And um, and we wish you all luck in applying to the fellowship program. And please, if some of your friends were not able to join today's webinar but are interested, it will be posted under the ASPPH Present section of the ASPPH website. So uh, please encourage them to go back and listen to the webinar or to just go onto our website and read the program descriptions um, for each of the available um, fellowship programs this year. We appreciate the time you've taken to be with us today, and I hope you all have a good day. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.